let's proceed with the arithmetic. Ooh, looks like a new manual entry. Haven't had one in a while, actually. Yeah, there's no manual entries in this entire block. So, let's see. To know the difference between things, you need subtraction. To get subtraction, first you need negative numbers. Well, that's assuming you only have addition. You can define subtraction without defining a negative number. You can have subtraction on positive numbers. Uh, you know, strictly positive. A function from positive to positive to positive. In fact, I could say that in order to have addition, I need to have subtraction of negative numbers. But whatever. So, yeah. I remember this. I... Hope they don't use Deuce complement. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's Deuce complement. <laughs> this level introduces Deuce complement, the most common representation for negative numbers. Here, the highest digit is negated. For bytes, this means the eighth. Wow, what? Bytes, this means the eighth digit changes its value from one twenty-eight to. Negative 128. I guess that's one way of looking at it. Wait a minute. I need, I need a minute to just let that sink in. This is... Uh, this is, this might send me off on a rant, because, see, I've had to deal with two's complement numbers, but I've had to deal with two's complement numbers in a very unusual setting, and in a very theoretical one. I've had to define two's complement numbers, and uh, two's complement operations, and two's complement conversion, in terms of pure numeric functions without using bits at all. So when you have a binary number, as you know, you have a representation of it as two to the power of a one plus two to the power of a two plus what's that, whatever, right? And uh, two's complement is also this, but it has weird properties again perhaps and i do remember i uh, my rem my memory of it is pretty vague goodness if i can pronounce word my memory of it is pretty vague um but i do vaguely remember that i do i do vag vaguely remember thinking that this would be much easier if i had bits but i only had notions of numbers as abstract concepts and I've had to do definitions and proofs on that. Uh, here's here's one thing for example. Uh, when you have a regular integer uh, you can have n bit integers with no issues. So for example if you if you take a look here at my mega binary adder and remember the corrections from last time, I could have as many leading zeros as I could, as I wanted, and it was fine. You can, you can just keep growing a number, and the representation remains the same. Oh, this is not true of two complement numbers, because this most significant bit changes when you grow in size. Now perhaps, or not even perhaps, I'm pretty sure, in a real computer, you do not have variable length integers normally. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem. You always have, you always know what your most significant bit is and you always know what your negative um, position is. But you can imagine, hopefully you can, 
that dealing with this in a non-fixed situation can be very annoying. So for example, imagine you're given the number negative 2474 and you need to convert it to two's complement. Uh, did I say negative? Hopefully I did. Negative 2000, whatever. And you need to co convert it to two's complement. Now, if you know the length of your integer, right? If you know that it's an 8-bit or 16-bit or 32 or 64-bit integer, there's no problem with doing that. However, if, for example, in a communication protocol, this in a serialization protocol, you need to condense your integer as much as possible. And if your integer is a 10-bit integer, you don't want to use 16 bits for it. Then you have a real problem with how to calculate how many bits it takes to encode into this complement number. Now, of course, it's possible and it's, it's not extremely difficult it's not a super complicated formula but it's just really unpleasant to work with and i found it quite mind-bending i remember drawing graphs of how these complement numbers worked of how different functions on them behaved depending on your bit length and stuff but yeah my recollection of it is very vague at this point so, anyways, I don't think, click here to turn on timerless accessibility mode, okay. Hopefully, none of that will be a problem for me. And, uh, well, in, in this setup where I have bytes with, well, where I have actual bytes, actual bits. Uh, let's see. I guess let's proceed. What's gonna be my? Well, no, I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna apply the same method I did. Just go from highest to lowest, and if it's negative, start with minus one twenty-eight. So let's go. One. Well, signed. Yeah, fifteen. I should probably. Well, yeah, whatever. Uh, I. I should probably also really quickly say that there's a different possible representation of a binary number, which I'm not exactly sure which position it uses for the sign, but basically you can have a binary number or yeah, a binary, a binary integer. You can have a binary integer with a different representation. You can have just a regular integer, so a regular 7-bit integer like this, and then your final uh, bit is just a bit encoding the sign you apply to your integer. So for example, if you had 64, you can flip a bit that says minus, and you'll have minus 64. To be very clear, this is not it. Two's complement is not a sign. So this minus 28 does not apply a sign, obviously, to your number. Why is this done this way? Well, my understanding has always been that this is to save one number. Because, of course, the range here is uh, negative to 128 to negative 127. While in... Uh, uh, integers with a sign, you'll have a range of a range of negative one twenty seven to one twenty seven, and where you lose an integer is zero. When you have zero, you will be able to flip the sign bit, and you'll have plus zero and minus zero, and that's kind of wasteful because generally you don't need a plus zero or minus zero. Although in IEEE seven five four floating point you do. So yeah, let's let's go back and let's retry. Hopefully I do better this time. One. Fifteen. Why does it not reset? I don't wanna undo my flippage. What? 
negative one, negative two. Okay, I guess that's why. It's because it it gives me this is weird. Negative seven. Um, did I do better previously? I felt I felt like I did I did much better on the goodness. What is happening, man? It's late. Ah, oh, no. I'm I'm confused by the fact they don't reset the knobs and having to deal with what I previously had and bring it to where I need to be it requires me to apply a different algorithm. Okay, whatever. Fifteen minus one minus two negative three negative 13 I mean I guess flipping these bits does addition kind of so I should go I should go left to right again if I'm too too low in the negative kind of okay 1 15 negative 1 what wait what am I doing this is negative 1 negative two negative three negative two again goodness so negative 15 oh no oh no what's the how do i quickly do that How do you quickly do that? What am I missing here? I have no problem with positive numbers. But this Because I have to I have to both flip them up and down at points. Can you can you reset for me please? I, I think I would do better if they were reset. I don't mind flipping a million bits just okay let's try again I guess one 15 negative one negative two I subtract one minus two plus one minus four plus I need I need plus one what up. How could I even get plus one there? <laughs> okay, that's the rest of the video. Uh, guess I might cut out a section of me just struggling. We'll see. Fifteen. Same again. Negative one, negative two, minus three, minus three again, minus five. How do I get to minus five? Or minus four? What? Minus sixteen. Okay, so minus four. So I don't have the time to explain it now. Minus six. What am I doing? Ah, uh, good job! I reached level three. I don't. I I had no idea what I was doing there. So yeah, um, go between. Negative and positive, you flip all the bits and add one. Yeah, that's another property. Oh, goodness, this gives me flashbacks. Just see, flip a bit is not a particularly simple 
Algebraic operation. Arithmetic operation. Right, flip the third bit. You, you cannot, like, imagine, imagine you have the number 2800, whatever, and you're told to flip a bit. Right, again, I understand it's possible, but if you need to do it actual numbers, it can be a pain. If the highest bit is value is always negative, yes, that's obvious. The byte adder you built also works with signed number numbers. That is not obvious to me. There is still only exactly one way. That is also obvious. It's not entirely clear to me why the byte adder keeps working. I mean, I, I can believe it, but... Twenty-eight plus one twenty-eight. Well, it goes into zero, I guess. Or one twenty-eight minus one twenty-eight. This is negative sixty-four. How do you differentiate, by the way, between signed and unsigned bits or bytes? You don't have types in assembly, do you? <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this manual page. Mm -hmm. Okay, the main advantage of this complement is that the negative representation works seamlessly with the same adder. One's complement. The changing the sign, yeah. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing one's complement is uh, the what I described. Yeah, two representations for zero, positive and negative zero, which makes comparisons more difficult. Base negative two. Goodness. Negative one. Negative numbers. Toggle between... What do you mean toggle? Do I... What do I toggle? I don't toggle anything. I have just bits. Yeah, so... Again, I vaguely I vaguely remember this statement about this complement. That the negative representation works seamlessly. While this one... I gather does not. But I don't exactly remember why. All right. Active numbers. I don't get what this is. This we'll find out. Sign negator. I don't feel ready, but let's proceed. At this level, you probably want to turn on sign numbers, so the highest bit shows negative one twenty-eight. Oh, so this is just. This is just uh, a display feature. Okay, cosmetics. Taking the input as signed, where the eighth bit is negative 128. Make a component that takes a number and negates it. For example, 4 negated would become negative 4. 9 minus 9 negated would become 9. Oh, no. Yeah, it's clear. It's clear. So. Something about flipping all the bits. This is really... <laughs> this is giving me flashbacks. Ah, okay. So... I have... How do I even, what do I even write here? I have negative two to the eighth, which is to the seventh, plus two to the sixth, 
do to the fifth, well, let's say A, B, C, I don't know, two to the fourth plus two to the third. Is this right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, of course, eight bits. So here's an eight bit number. I forgot to add bits, B, C, D, E, F, H. And now I need to negate it. So I'm gonna get two to the seventh, minus this, minus this, minus this, minus this wait this complement i seem to yeah i'm i'm starting to remember now again i'm getting flashbacks but of course in order to get this from that wait no i cannot do that see i cannot do subtraction <laughs> because of course i can get this by subtracting from something i can get this by subtracting from uh uh, from what? Well, from from anything really. It doesn't doesn't matter. I just arithmetically, you can add a minus sign to anything. How do I do this nicely? Okay, time out. Okay, let's go back to the playground and let's just test a couple numbers. So, and let's let's actually write them down. Doesn't matter. So, okay, let's let's say nine. All right, what is nine? Nine equals. equals zero 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 one zero zero one I will use leading zeros now and negative nine is gonna be do I flip everything negative ten plus one yeah I flip everything plus one okay I do I do remember that being said I just didn't want to go back to the oh I can't even I'm not gonna I'm not gonna redo this by hand again. I'm not ready to race, no. Okay, so I flip all bits and I add one. Now just think to yourself for a second, how do you flip all bits without the notion of bits? Right? If you cannot negate. <laughs> just <laughs> I cannot, I can't handle this, right? Imagine, imagine you are sitting here in front of a number, right? You're sitting here in front of a number, two, two, six, five, three, whatever, right? And you're told to, to negate all bits or negate and bits, right? Yeah, we, we already know that negating all bits will negate the number. Like, these things cannot be encoded nicely. Uh, cannot be expressed nicely in arithmetic. Okay, so sign negator negate everything and add one. I, I can do that. I can take this input. I can negate everything and I can add one. This is wrong. Inefficient. Now I negated everything. I'm gonna add one.
That's not right. Zero is broken. Why is it broken? Why is zero broken? Why is zero broken? I don't get it. Get to 55 plus one. What? I was to 55 plus one, one. Oh, uh, of course, I'm using the wrong output. Result versus carry. I'm curious, I could connect. I could connect a one bit thing to a byte output. All right. Man. I don't know. Maybe I just have some kind of emotional trauma relating to to his compliment. <laughs> and um All right. We're done with this compliment for now. Let's proceed with a one bit decoder. I I will not optimize that by the way. Create a component that can switch a signal between two pins. What? Aha! Huh. So the signal is always on. I always have a signal, kind of. I always have a signal, kind of. And then I switch. Oh. Okay. Have a true stable. This seems very simple. Can I do a very simple solution for it? That's the question. So I have... Well... No, I have two outputs. That's important. Output 1. Output 2. Yeah. No, they, they're they just... They're just different negated versions of the input. Right, so output 1 is input negated. Output 2 is input not negated. That's all. Cool. I guess. Comment. Let's try a 3-bit decoder. Something tells me that's much more difficult. With three bits of input, there are eight combinations. Make a circuit that selects one output for each of the eight combinations. Select one output. Desired bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No more or less than one bit should be on at a time. Okay. This is more interesting. Probably. Is there a simple solution here? If all are wrong, we need to, to pipe to eight. Hmm. Well, what I'm thinking immediately is I have eight different outputs and I don't have a gate with eight outputs other than a byte splitter. I wonder if there's something I could do with that. Because if I use, if I use the other gates I have, this suggests that I'm gonna need at least eight gates, probably, or seven or something, you know, because this one will be piped into there, this one into there, and if if the same gate, if the same wire is piped into multiple, then that's obviously not the solution. I wonder if there's something that can be done with the bytes here. So my input is a. I can treat it as a byte. Hmm. 
Yeah. So... This is a decoder. Okay, I can see how this is a decoder. Right? Because you have an encoded thing, three bits, and then your output is uh, base one, pretty much. Right? You have eight different things to pipe into. And you need to decode your base two number into a base one number. That's interesting, but I'm still I'm still not seeing how to do this. Other than, of, of course, I can just hard code a huge hulking contraption to just do this truth table. But I'm going to have to think about how to make this nicely. I wonder if perhaps the solution to this is uh, subtracting one in a loop until I reach zero and then from that I somehow decide which output to use and so if I get or well it until I reach not zero but 255 or whatever 127 128 What I'm also wondering is perhaps my solution to the previous level was not huh, cool enough, you know? Maybe there is a more generic approach to this than this combination of not and just straight pipe, because I did notice this as an option. Or maybe I need to try to figure out how to apply this. I do move over one every time something happens. Right? So by default, I'm piped into one. If input one is on, I'm piped into two. Input two is on. I also need to detect that input one is off. At this point. Hmm. Okay, here's another idea. Uh, going back to my byte ideas. Uh, basically, the output needs to be a byte with a single bit set. So that's a power of two. And... If I start with a byte that is 1, and I multiply it by 2, or, wait, what do I do? No, that's not quite right. See, I need to, I need to, in, input 1 is the first power for me, All right, two, four, six, eight. Input two is gonna be, wait, what is, what am I even doing? What? I'm confusing myself, but uh, I hope, I hope the idea is slightly clearer to you than it is to me. I'm, I made it worse with my explanation, I know. I'll be right back. Yeah, no, so I need to raise 2 to the power that is encoded by this 3-bit integer. Right, so I, I need to raise 2 to the power of 8. But I don't have multiplication or powers yet. That said, I do know how to raise 2 to the 8th. I just... <laughs> I mean, I just shifted, just set a bit. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Is this actually... I'm actually, this is actually what I'm implementing. 
Right, I have a 3-bit number and uh, not only am I decoding it, kind of, as I explained, I'm actually raising 2 to its power. If I treat this as a byte, that's what I'm doing. I'm raising 2 to the power of this number. Okay. But how do I do that? Hmm. I've sat on this for a little while. And... Basically, I give up. Um, I wouldn't exactly call it giving up. I do have a solution uh, that will definitely work. But I give up trying to come up with something interesting or nice or something using an advanced concept, some kind of raising to powers or bit shifts or I don't know. Um, I am just going to encode this truth table. Now, the nature of this truth table makes it pretty simple to encode, and it's actually, I expect it to turn out pretty minimal and fairly symmetric. Uh, and honestly, I doubt that other solutions will be much better in terms of NAND score. For example, if I were to use a an 8-bit adder, I'm pretty sure a single 8-bit adder is going to be larger than what I have in mind. But other than that, I really don't see a nice way to do this. Looking forward to seeing a better solution in the comments. So yeah, what we're going to do for this is we have this truth table, as always. We're going to use some negations. I'm going to try to save on negations by applying them once to each input. So we have input 1 and input 1 negated. We have input 2 and input 2 negated. And we have input 3 and input 3 negated. Like so. Oh, let's a little bit, I guess. Uh, whatever, I'll, I'll play around with it later. And we can just make use of these triple ands to encode it each and every bit of the output. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? And then we just... Um, yeah, then we just encode this truth table, so for... So like like this and then for the first input we're gonna have negation of everything piped into and for the second input we're gonna have input one and not everything else piped and so on and so forth I'm gonna just do that it's gonna be a crazy wiring job but guess it is what it is and I'll be back so this is what I came up with it's not particularly nice looking but I think it's okay we had our intern add a disable bit to this component we were tired of looking at him running in circles and we're looking for other pointless and tedious tasks to give him What? Come again? Disable. How does how did this how does a disable pin save the intern? We had our intern add a disable bit. Oh. I see. So this is I did this and the intern added a disable bit. All right. Um. So yeah, this is. I mean, the curious part about this is there's a lot of routing, right? This is the main part of the contraption. But really, if you look at gates, we have three knots and we have a bunch of ends and that's all. That's not that much, although a three pin end is probably fairly expensive. I don't exactly remember how, how I made it. Uh, I, th I think I made it at two ends. There might be a better way, I, 
I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah. I am curious if there is a better way to do this, but that's gonna be the solution for me. Let's proceed. Do we do final memory or do we do final arithmetic? Oh no, I'm not ready to do a logic engine. Am I ready to do a little box? Oof, tough decision. Let's just take a quick peek. The same way I did <laughs> take a quick peek the bus last time. Can you fit four bytes of memory in this limited space? In this level, you have to build a circuit that can save or load from four different bytes of memory. You're given one bit that determines if you are to load, another bit determines if you are to save, and it comes with a corresponding value. Additionally, you have two address bits. With two bits, there are four combinations, one for each byte of memory in this level. What? The output has an enable pin, enable it only on load. Tip, join wires in the middle and use the right angles or this will be a mess. <laughs> Space bar rotates components. No, it doesn't. R rotates components. It's just because I set it up that way. Okay, you know what? This looks like a pain. This looks like a pain. I don't even understand the statement of the problem immediately. I have a weird amount of inputs and outputs. And there's a whole bunch of new stuff. So I think I'd rather left the left this for later. Because this video is long enough. Save or load from four different bytes of memory. So I have four. I don't have four bytes. Where's where? Where do I take four bytes from? I have I have one input and one byte of output. Do I implement four bytes inside of here? I have a four four byte memory, and then I load from it. Right, I, I have an address. Yeah, this is an address to... It's weird that they have a save, save load in one, but they have an address as two separate bits. Uh, it's a bit strange, but okay. Yeah. This doesn't... Okay, this doesn't look too bad, but still, I'm gonna leave it for later. So, that'll be it. Bonus footage, bonus footage. Before you go off telling me in the comments that this compliment is obvious, which uh, I guess you've already done that, have you? Since that was the beginning of the video and this is the end. Oh well, anyways, here is the thing I complained about. This is me four years ago dealing with this compliment in cock. And I'm not gonna go into the detail of everything that's happening here. It's not it's not that much. But there's of course there's more files to it than just bits.v. Uh, but I just wanna real quick go over a couple of complaints. So this right here, remember how I said it's it was non-trivial how many bits a two's complement number required? Yeah, this is it. This is me working it out in the comments. So, you can see, consider three cases. If n is zero, then 2 is VLAN, the number of bits required to encode n is one. If n is positive, then the answer is floor log two n plus two, plus two, mind you, not plus one. And if n is less than zero, then the number of bits required is ceiling log two of negative n plus one, which, what even is log 2 of negative n? Oh, well, because n is 
negative, of course. Yeah. Um, so that's imagine dealing with this in an arithmetic setting, and also just <laughs> real quick, imagine your um, what's the word smallest undivisible number of bits you can use is a single octet for this integer. So you need to be divisible by eight and you need to encode the number in as little as few octets as possible. So for example, if your number fits into three octets, so 24 bits, you don't want to use a 32 bit number. You don't want to use four octets. You want to use three octets and imagine having this as the number of bits, then wrapped into a number of octets, which is also gonna do floor and ceiling, or, or whatever. I don't even, I don't even want to think about it. And imagine then trying to deal with that arithmetic, arithmetically, and trying to prove theorems about it. That was a lovely experience. And yeah, this is another thing which I won't even try to explain. But basically. Uh, this is my attempt to extend the two's complement function to be slightly more continuous so that it had slightly nicer properties that I could work with. Yeah, that was... Oof. That was something. That was something. Alright. That'll be it. For real.